Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I created this animation. So, how do you go from this to this? Well, I'm going to show you the variety of techniques that I use to get to the result. For example, creating this pretty handy puddle blending shader or creating this pretty realistic, versatile water shader using a variety of modeling techniques and a lot of handy texture blending techniques as well to create the realistic result that we had at the end. Before we begin, if you'd like to get access to the project files for the scene that we created in this video or the animated looping tree assets that I created, you can get access to them on my Patreon, including the previous assets and scenes that I've created so far. Also, a big thank you to the people who joined from my previous video. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So the first step for any artwork is collecting reference. I did not have an extensive mood board for this scene, but generally for more complicated artworks like for example this one, I would heavily recommend having a more extensive reference board like pro artists generally do and not do it like I did. Now let's get into Blender. So most of the footage in the breakdown is probably sped up by around three times, sometimes four times, uh, but I'll try to slow it down in areas where I want to explain something or show something better on how I did it so that uh, you could understand it better if you're interested in that breakdown. Here I'm just subdividing a plane and then using proportional editing or sculpting to just set up the main foreground plane and so that I can just bring in a cube, the main water body that's going to be for the scene. And now I'm going to break down how I did the water shader for the scene. So I start with a glass BSDF that I plug into the surface node and then I take a volume absorption node and put that into the volume. That just means basically it's going to absorb any light as it goes further deeper inside of the cube so it gets darker progressively. Then I'm just going to take a bump, a noise texture, make the blacks and the whites a little more contrasty using the color ramp and plug that into the height. And I would recommend turning down the distance of the bump nodes so you don't get like extremely high bumps which makes it look pretty unrealistic just keep it at like 0 0.08 that i kept increase the roughness of the glass a little bit for the surface of the water so it's not like crystal clear because i don't want it to be a crystal clear water because it's kind of supposed to be like muddy-esque water then i'm just plugging in an transparent mix shader it just makes it a little more light because i don't want it to look like an ocean either I'm gonna play around more with the values of the colors and after that at the end I'm just gonna bring in a mix shader and plug the shadow ray into the mix factor which basically means that the shadows cast from the cube are not gonna be that extreme. It basically kind of just negates it and uh, allows more light to pass through inside of the cube. After that I start with sculpting the foreground. Just using the sculpt to give it a better composition, just using the heights and the corners to guide the viewer's eyes to the front. I put down the plane in the middle of the lake and put down a basic cube and then start scaling it because that's going to be our main focal point, the cabin. These next 6-7 minutes of the breakdown are supposed to be how I did the modeling itself of the cabin. So if you're interested in that, I recommend you watch it. But if you're not that interested, you can skip ahead to the texturing, the volume, the lighting parts of it. I have left timestamps down below, so you can use them to skip ahead if you want to. And here I start experimenting with different shapes that could fit the shape of the cabin. I have not decided for the final shape for the cabin yet. This is just experimentation phase. I would heavily recommend doing something like this when you're trying to model piece from just your imagination using just like I guess some basic references of how cabins look like. But overall, just try different things, different shapes. If it doesn't work out as it won't in this try, I sculpt some tiles. Uh, I just put down some three different types of cubes and then sculpt them to give them a different shape helps give shape to the tiles and make them less uniform otherwise they look too cuby and basic I guess. Uh, so I just do that. After that I place them around in the scene. I'm just not happy with the overall shape how it's coming along so in the end I just delete it and start with a completely new cube and since I'd already 
kind of judged what proportions would work. I just set it up and then I just put planks for the roof. And uh, after that I start scattering with the tiles on top of the roof, then use the randomized transform. You can just press F3, type randomized transform, you'll get it. I do that and then I start with booleans. I create a basic cube, extruded in random parts using proportional editing because I want the roof to be kind of destroyed through like, I want trees to come out from the bottom and came out and kind of broke the roof because after years it had already kind of weakened. The planks had weakened and like the termites had kind of eaten part of them. And then since the trees wanted to go up, they just kind of broke through. And I'm just here using spheres and cubes. After that, I start with manually editing after doing the booleans. I have noticed some artists, mostly I guess beginner artists, tend not to mesh around with the mesh afterwards. And I think that's not good. I think if you are someone who is starting currently and are watching this video, I would recommend you, after you do some booleans, you manually edit your mesh and make it feel more realistic and organic by extruding and manipulating parts of the mesh to your liking. It just helps give it a more organic and natural feel. And also, I guess you can change it to your artistic liking. I do the same with the tiles, put certain tiles in random different places, extruding out and stuff like that, give them some breakup. Then I go into sculpt mode and just kind of sculpt out a decent ground plane. Then I put in a new small room on the side of the cabin. I want this to be used as like more of a storeroom that the person uses because the cabin inside is just for like living room and kitchen and sleeping. And then this room is just for all the random junk they kind of need. Then I just bring in the tiles use those tiles, scatter them around into the new roof. First I put the planks because even though they might not be visible in this one, it's just kind of gives a better more realistic feel to yourself. Like you just feel like you're being more authentic to the piece itself. And then I do the same process with the randomized transform on top of the tiles. I also manually edit parts of the tiles like at the end, like make them feel like they're kind of drooping, kind of falling off on the verge of it at least. and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. From here, we move on to adding more details to the base of the cabin itself. I noticed from the references I used that these kind of older European-esque buildings and cabins tend to have more of a concrete corners that give support to the rest of the building, I suppose. So I started with modeling those out and just putting them in each corner itself. And then I again put down cubes as booleans where later I will put down the doors and the windows and also give them support using those concrete cubes all around them. Here I put down those cubes in every single door and every single window as I said just giving them different shapes and rotations so that it doesn't look copy pasted and actually looks more organic and after doing all that that's how it looks and I am very happy with how it's looking so far. Here I'm putting down the mid ground I suppose. Here I'm using this plane, extruding parts of it and sculpting it to give it a decent shape in the mid ground behind the cabin where the trees are going to be placed later. Then I jump into world creator to export some normal and height maps using the terrain I created. I find it a very handy tool to create very good background height maps. Now we move on to the volume, the atmosphere of the sea. For that, I put in a cube, scale it up so it engulfs the entire lake. Then I put in a volume scatter, plug that in the volume, put down a math and a light path node. The math node goes into the density and the light path node, the camera ray goes into the value. This allows us to control the density, but what the light path node does is it lets the light pass through the volume much easier, which means that inside of the volume, it's more bright. It's kind of more realistic in my opinion. It gives a better, nicer looking result. It might not be like as good as the May scatter node that's coming into the new blender, but it's still good. I started to change the values of the sunlight. I kind of put it in, but didn't mess around much with it. Same for the world. I changed the color of the world to a little more greenish color and uh, changed the skylight strength to pretty low and make the angle pretty wide. So it's a very soft or ish light with pretty little strength. For the sky, I bring in an image as a plane. 
you can find a lot of decent sky photographs from Unsplash that you can use as your background. What I would recommend uh, when you do uh, is uh, plug in the image texture into the emission shader and then you can manipulate it using the mix color node. Basically, uh, without if you don't use the emission, the volume basically will just drown out the entire sky. There will be almost no contrast left and it just doesn't look that good. So to get a more pleasing result, I would recommend you do that. Then I move on to the tree creation part, which I create in Speed Tree. I think I end up creating four different variations of them uh, that progressively lose their leaves. I will leave a link to my Patreon where you can get access to all of them. They have about eight seconds of loopable animation that you can just put in into any scene. Before I bring in the trees, I decide to do some material work. I bring in my ground textures pile them up a little and bring in a displacement texture, not a normal map at all, because they clash together if you have them both together. Then bring in a subdiv, have adaptive subdivision on, turn the material settings to displacement and bump, so you get bump as well, and that's why we didn't have a normal. And basically this displaces your plane without needing super high geometry, which you would need if you went with normal subdivision. Now I'm going to show you how I did the puddle texture. First, I take a mix shader node and mix a glossy BSTF and a principal BSTF together and also take a image texture and plug that into the factor. I reduce the roughness to almost zero but not completely zero because nothing is completely zero and then I can paint. I can paint using the image texture but it, there's two issues. It looks like silver, not real puddles and B, there's not real definition. It looks like blobs. To fix that, we take a color ramp plug the roughness of your dirt material into the color ramp and then plug that into a mix color node set to color burn or basically any of the options that look decent to you and then you can see it looks far 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 better and if you turn the strength a little down of your texture painting it looks even better then fixing the puddle issue you duplicate your displacement nodes turn the middle level of one of them to 0.5 and turn the scale to completely zero and mix those two together using the same image mask. Then you can try painting again. And as you see, as you increase the strength, you start having actual puddles. There you go. It's, I guess, I don't know how correct that is. You, there's probably better ways of doing it. That's just the way I came up with that I thought looked decent because it gives you like variety and you can play around with the color ramp values to get better results. I decide to use a cube and sculpt a basic plank. I want the plank to lead towards the cabin from the front of the camera and act as leading lines towards the cabin. Then I bring in some photo scanned assets from Polyhaven. It's a completely free site, so you can use any of their assets. And I decide to use GeoScatter to scatter it. You can use basically anything like uh, just the basic particle system or geometry nodes. I just use it because it's the fastest way to do it for myself. So I scatter the grass. Then I use a variety of different things that GeoScatter offers like texture masking and different kinds of variations that it offers that I used and I also optimize it for the camera. After I'm done with the scattering, I decide to put down the plane. I try to not make it very uniform because that's just a very dead giveaway. I want it to look like it's different types of planes and planks that have broadened in different ways that have been scattered. I try my best to do that and after that I actually decide to make use of the puddle texture that I created and I start painting it from the camera's perspective to see where it would look the best. I don't want it to be too distracting so I don't do it on the sides, I only do it in the main center of the frame. Then I finally bring in the trees that I created for this video and I try to experiment with the main big oak type tree that I created uh, as the main focal point but obviously it's not gonna work. It wasn't supposed to be that, it was supposed to be in the foreground and it looks great. At least I think so. If there's any feedback you guys like to give me, I'd appreciate that. Then I start to play around with the positions of the pine trees inside of the building, just trying to see where the trees would look the best, how to rotate them. And surprisingly, on my first try, I just felt like they just look good, so I just left them that way. Then I went on with the scattering of the trees on the, both of the mid-ground planes. One tip that I could give you guys about scattering 
trees on a lakeside or just any water body in general, I've noticed that around the shore, the trees start to become smaller. I'm not sure why this phenomenon happens. It's probably something to do with the roots, but I would recommend using a weight paint and painting around the shore to make the trees a little smaller compared to the denser forest and using different values as you get closer to the shore to make it even denser, the weight map. Then I start to play around with the location of the trees in the foreground. I just felt like one tree would be enough, otherwise it'll look too crowded. Then I just animate the camera, just change it on one axis, just going forward, give it a little bit of camera shake and that's it. Then I bring in just some logs and bushes, again from Polyhaven, I'll try to just leave a link down below to these assets, and just try to scatter them in a compositionally pleasing way. Even if you're not an expert at that, like me, I'm not, you can just always try and just go for the best result that you can get. Then just playing around with the scatter again, just making it look better, improving on it as time goes. Then I start with the texturing of the main cabin. I bring in a roof tile texture. Again, you can find a bunch of random textures in Polyhaven, even recommend the bridge. And now I guess it's fab. I do some booleans and put on the... I guess the rock boundaries, or I'm not sure what to call them, but just do those around around the door and the window of the storeroom of the lakeside cabin. And then I start with the texturing of those concrete bricks. I guess that's what you call them. And uh, yeah, just just pick textures that you think look okay and just go at it. Then I bring in a cobblestone texture for the main lakeside cabin and it looks too uniform, I want there to be much more grime and dirt build up around the edges. For that, I just duplicate the texture and use an ambient occlusion node as the main factor plugged in with the color ramp, which we can use to change its intensity. One thing you would notice, around the windows, it gets black. That is caused by the planes that I put in behind the window to block the light, and they can cause that, so make sure you don't do that. And then, have another color ramp, with a mixed color using again the roughness like we did for the ground and just play around with the values of the color ramp to mix in the grime better and you can change the mix color to different things like soft light or difference i think at the end uh difference looks the best for me so i end up going with that and now it's much more darker on the edges which i'm very pleased with then i decide to bring in some more bushes and these bushes are again the same ones, same goes for the log that I'm scattering around. Just try to do these things while keeping the composition in mind. Sometimes I get lost while just trying to place things as much as I can and then realize I maybe overdid it or underdid it depending on the day. Just try to make sure you keep a healthy balance of both. Then I decided to put an area light to bring in a little bit more focus into the main cabin because uh, the scene was looking too dull in my opinion. So you have to do these kind of, I guess, quote unquote, unrealistic techniques to make your renders look good, even though you're trying to be realistic and realistically this wouldn't be the thing. But we, we literally are God here, right? So you can just play around with different things, place in different kinds of lights, see what looks good and call it a day. Before calling it a day, I bring in a volume. I think I created this for some project a while ago or something. It's just, a fog, a VDB file, and it just has a very basic shader built into it. You can just copy it from here, or you can use the scene files that I provide to play around with. And I just change the values, play around with those to get the result I like, place one into the cabin as well while reducing its density a little so it's not as dense, and it looks good. So I decide to finally render it out. Before I take it into DaVinci, I just do a basic glare node and a lens distortion node into the main Blender compositor because I kind of just like doing that in Blender. It just, for some reason, looks a little better to me than doing it in DaVinci, so I do it here. After that, I take it into DaVinci to do the final color grade. Then in DaVinci, I give it a fade in, fade out, try on different LUTs, uh, use the light ray node that is there. I use it very subtly, like point. 0 0.5 or something like that at the end because it's just too extreme just a little bit to give it a kind of a glow and that's pretty much it just some contrast just like playing around with the saturation and that's about it and with 
doing all of that, here we have the final result.